we can a end all of the carbon-based fuels and just rely on solar and wind power. Well, uh, no. Uh, uh, it would be so lovely if we could come up with uh, a great alternate fuel. I remember we were talking about the 70s when I was covering the Ice Age. I was also covering the development of hydrogen fuel for automobiles. Great concept. Couldn't make it work. Uh, we have some hydrogen-powered buses today and a few government vehicles. There's some inert problems or innate problems with it uh, that haven't been s solved. Uh, we look at fuel cells. Uh, we haven't come up with the solutions yet. Our hybrid automobiles are a wonderful step, but they are not practical yet. Uh, economically very unpractical still. Uh, and solar power might work great in San Diego, where I live, but it doesn't work with a hoot in Antarctica or Alaska, and it's not very good in Seattle. And wind power is only good at a few limited places, uh, it's, and it's a very expensive technology still. We don't have, and solar uh, power, we're, we're getting better and better at it all the time. Better and better and better, and it could be that we will, it will be an ultimate solution, but we're a long way from being there. It seems the one uh, solution that we do have for a big part of the picture, uh, right up the road from you, 50 miles from San Diego to San Onofre, <laughs> nuclear power. But the folks that's, that are opposed to all the carbon-based fuels have been fighting nuclear power for 30 years, too. I also covered the first nuclear power plants opening as a young newsman. Uh, that was a big event, and we were told power would be generated so cheaply we wouldn't even have meters anymore. It'd be <laughs> uh, send five dollars a month and use all the electric power you want. Was kind of the concept. I'm serious. I mean, this is the 1950s, and we were told this was going to be savior of Earth, and in some ways, it could have been. Nuclear power is uh, pretty amazing. But uh, environmentally, uh, politically, very difficult sell. I have no reason to, uh, I would not challenge the building of a nuclear power plant near your house. Don't build one by my house. Uh, we see France and many other countries oh, going yeah. ahead with it, but here in the United mm. States where we pioneered it, not a nuclear power plant in the last... Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's an outrage, of course. And uh, the, uh, we have, this country is, has this country gone nuts? We have emotional opposition to so many things that on a practical basis make wonderful sense. And uh, that's the way it is with nuclear power. Three Mile Island, you know, got this incredible media play. Chernobyl uh, was indeed a true tragedy. And uh, that's about... The, it's kind of the, almost the beginning and end for nuclear power. If it ever makes a comeback in my lifetime, I'll be amazed. Uh, but it's, oh yeah, it, it's, it is a magnificent power source. Uh, since 2000 or 2001, correct me, uh, we haven't seen any raise in the temperature that uh, the global warming folks have been at. It's a, we're in a cooling trend. The Earth has gone, the sun has gone quiet. Those guys in Canada and Russia are talking about an ice age, though they've probably <laughs> gone over the edge. Uh, they've got a point. The sun's in a very quiet phase. And uh, without, and, and a cooling trend is underway. And uh, I'm sure the global warming alarmists are going nuts. Because, uh, but you know, they, uh, Jim Hansen, who runs the NASA temperature program that still has his ways of manipulating the data, excuse me, massaging the data so that it accurately portrays in his mind uh, the, uh, that uh, the earth is warm. The truth is, you know, South America had the worst winter in 50 years. China's had the worst winter now in 50 years. The U.S. is having a real old-fashioned winter. Uh, the Alaska just finished one of the worst cold spells in a couple of decades. Uh, I didn't see any press on it at all, but uh, 40 below for seven days straight at Fairbanks. Uh, a place called Chicken went to 72 below. Uh, 
some of the coldest weather they've ever seen in modern times in Alaska. The Arctic ice cap, we heard all about it melting last summer. That sucker's frozen up. <laughs> oh, man, is the North Pole frozen up now. Uh, it's been a dastardly cold winter there. People are praying for global warming. And I'm, yeah, they are. And I'm wondering uh, what, what the global warming doomdayers are going to use next year to point to, to claim that global warming is happening. Well, it brings, brings you to the final point here. Uh, are you hopeful that with uh, yourself and many other of the scientists finally being able to speak out in an organized fashion uh, and with the, at the same time the temperatures uh, uh, cooperating and it's becoming very obvious that uh, we are not facing a, a, a real imminent threat, that there may be some sanity returning and we may be able to head this off before uh, uh, a Kyoto-style uh, political solution is put in place. I'll give you a flip answer. No. I am not hopeful. Uh, in this crazy world, uh, I see things we shouldn't expect, that the UN will tell us it's over, that they were wrong, that Al Gore will tell us he's wrong and return his prices, uh, that uh, suddenly politicians will step up and tell us the truth. No, these things aren't going to happen. Uh, things we can hope for, that through your efforts, mine, and those of thousands of other people who know the truth, uh, that we can begin to change some public opinion and calm the fears. And maybe enough that we, our governments won't spend billions and billions of dollars on silliness. Maybe. We can hope for that.